everyone, welcome to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and today we're going to be doing a video that is a little bit different to usual. I'm going to be showing you a day in the life of us just running our soap business. Today is going to be primarily focused on making. There are a few other little things we're going to be doing as well, but it's primarily going to be making. But I just want to show you guys exactly how much we do do on a day-to-day -day basis to actually keep this business running. Um, because there is quite a lot um, and we don't generally show everything that we kind of do. So today we are going to be doing that. We're not going to be postman. Oh no. So one of the many things we do on a day to day basis is accept our deliveries of new bits and pieces. And we generally have deliveries at least a couple of times a week. This one's turned up nice and early, which is good, which means we don't have to wait in for it later. Anyway, where was I? Um, I'm trying to adjust the camera because I kicked it when I stood up. Um, we're not going to have any special lighting today. Normally we have lighting in our videos just to kind of make it a bit brighter. Um, I'm going to be moving around the house and I don't want to be tripping over leads. So we're just going to have the natural lighting that we are being given. Um, you're also going to see me no makeup. I am vain enough to wear makeup when I do the intros to our videos, but I'm certainly not vain enough to put it on to have a day of making. I'm also in my dirty soap clothes because we're making and it's going to get messy and at the minute I'm in my dressing gown as well not because I'm lazy but because like most people in the world we're trying to avoid turning on the heating and it's a little chilly this morning so dressing gown on till I warm up um it is what time is it let's have a look it's 10 o'clock in the morning so far. I have done a few bits and pieces this morning already. I have edited a video. That is what you can hear whirring in the background. My video is processing at the moment and it makes a big whirring noise when it does that because my computer is not quite powerful enough to actually edit the video silently. So that will be whirring for a little while. I have also already wrapped up a load of bath bombs, which we are sending out today to a customer. We've got another couple of orders to go out today as well. So we might take you up to the post office later on. Um, but yeah, primarily we're gonna be making soaps and we're gonna be making some special edition soaps um, for a event we've got coming up in two months time. And we're probably, if we've got time, gonna make some regular soaps as well for our range. So that is what we are doing today. So let's give you a close up of the noisy, noisy computer. This is basically how I edit all of our videos. It's a free program, it's shortcut, and it's free and it's basic, but it does the job. But it does take a long time. It's been going already for about an hour and a half and it's still only 95% done. And annoyingly, because my computer isn't powerful enough, I can't use my computer for anything else while it's doing this, which is slightly annoying. Um, oh, just up here. That is our planner that shows all of the events we've got coming up. So all of those ones are events we're going to be trading out. I'll just give you a little quick glimpse of what we are doing. Big red cross, because I'm meant to be going on holiday. That would be good, first holiday in about eight years if it comes off and works. So that is what we have got for the year so far. Um, just thought I'd show you that because we do do quite a lot of events and that is what primarily sustains our business. Moving on. So this is where we're going to be working today. I've already got my five loaf moulds out for our special edition soaps. Just over here we have got a curing rack where the ones we have already made are curing. And just down here we have got a load of soap and this is kind of the volumes that we make. And it's all stored under here at the moment because it should be put away nicely. But when we moved house we have somehow managed to lose all of our lids to our boxes. And actually we've lost our boxes as well because these aren't ours, these are Wayne's sister's boxes that she kindly lent us. And yeah, we don't know where ours have gone, but we've managed to lose eight big boxes, which is kind of annoying because now we can't put our soaps away properly and stack them. So we're gonna to need to buy more of them, which is crazy because how do you lose eight boxes? Don't know, but we did. So this is our little working zone for the day. So we're starting for the five loaves. And what we tend to do is just get everything weighed out 
in separate little bowls first off. And then we get on to the making part. So Wayne is currently weighing out lots of butters and oils for us. So I've just about got everything weighed out to begin making the soap, but it has turned to snow outside. And for us here in the south of the UK, this is generally about as snowy as it ever gets. Um, I have still got my dressing gown on, which I'm going to need to take off before we start making. So I think we're going to relent and we're going to put the heating on because it's getting really chilly now. Well, at least UK chilly. There's probably some of you out there in really cold places like Canada or the South Pole. <laughs> and it's not half as chilly as it would be there, but it's cold for us. So we have got our moulds out and ready. I've got my clays and my fragrance oils weighed out for the first design we're doing, which is a black plum and rhubarb clay swirl. So we're gonna get on now, everything's weighed out. And we're going to begin the task of making some soap. So I thought while we are making the soap, which you can see me doing it now, rather than talk you through each process step by step, which I'm sure you've seen many times in our videos already, um, I'll just give you a little bit more information about how much soap we do generally make and how much we do kind of go through and how much we like to have um, already and cured and in reserve as well. Um, so generally on a day where we're just making our standard loaves which are one colour, maybe a couple of essential oil scents and you know a one loaf pour, we make either 10 or 20 loaves per day. So that is either 80 or 160 soaps per day, which sounds like a lot, but actually because we do wholesale and because we do a lot of fairs, we do find that we go through those numbers pretty quickly. Obviously we're not making soap like that every single day. There are other things we do as well, like our body butters and our sugar scrubs. So that is not every day. That is perhaps once or twice a week that we will make a big batch of soap like that. If we are making our more complicated limited editions like we are today, then we will generally make three, four, five loaves uh, in a day because it does get confusing and it does get complicated and there's so many different layers and it takes so much longer. So we will make, I say, anything between maybe three or five loaves of limited edition soap per day. And we don't continually make our limited edition soaps either. They are more popular at certain times of year. So we are making them now because we've got fairs coming up. And when Christmas comes up, we make a lot of limited edition soaps then as well. Um, but on the whole, it is a mixture of soap making, bubble, uh, bath bomb making, um, everything. We'll make different things on different days because it is just easier to kind of dedicate a certain day to a certain product type rather than doing soaps and bath bombs and scrubs, for example. Keep everything simple, soaps one day, bombs the next day, scrubs the day after that. And we're just finishing off this soap here now in the picture. And I think in a minute, I come back on camera and start speaking to you again. So I'm gonna shut up now. So we've just done two loaves of our soap, but I thought I'd stop here because I think we managed to highlight in that last little bit of soap making the sheer importance of actually wearing goggles. I don't know if anyone saw it, but when I was smacking down my loaf mould to uh, release any air bubbles, there was a couple of quite big ones and they actually splattered the lye or the batter up. And I think just on my goggles, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there we go. There's a couple, no, that doesn't make it easier. You might be able to see a couple of little specks round about here, and that is soap batter that has landed on the front of my goggles. So if I hadn't been wearing them, that could well have ended up in my eye. So that is why it's so important to wear goggles. Just a couple of little splatters, but if they'd been in my eye, they would have hurt. I think I might have, yeah, I've got it in my hair as well, actually. I'm gonna need to go and sort my hair out before we start on the third one and just give my face a wash, because I don't think it's on my face, because I can't feel anything, but safety first, we're gonna go and have a little wash, a little tidy up, then we're gonna come back for the next loaves. <laughs> So I am back from my impromptu hair wash. Um, 
all good. Check my face as well. There wasn't wasn't any on my face, thankfully. There's a red mark here, but that's just a spot that was there before. Um, yeah, thankfully, nothing on my face. There was more than I actually realised on my hair, and if I'd noticed at the time of actually bashing the soap down there was that much on my hair, I would have stopped and got it off there and then. But I genuinely didn't realise it was there until I actually filmed the bit to show you the goggles and I could see my reflection and realised it was all in my hair too. But thankfully it is all clean and washed out now, just normal shampoo, conditioner, whatnot. Um, but yeah, just something that kind of highlights how important things like goggles and whatnot and safety tips are. Let's get back to making the soap. So that was a little bit of drama there. Um, I'm very glad I was wearing my goggles. I think it's only the second time I've ever actually had lye or batter rather splash up into my face. Um, and I'm quite pleased I managed to catch it on camera actually, just because it does highlight safety issues. Um, I've had it once before um, and it wasn't a nice experience. So always wear the goggles, always wear the gloves, always wear the long sleeves and things like that. Um, it did interrupt our day a little bit. I'm not used to going and, you know, having a shower and a wash in between soap making. So we did get a little behind time, but it's definitely worth getting a bit behind time if it means that you're keeping yourself safe. And that is the third of our black plum and clay soaps finished. And I'm just placing them all on this other table over here so that they can be out of the way and cure nicely. So it's just gone four o'clock now and we've just finished the first three loaves of soap that we're doing today. Today's one of those days where everything just seems to be taking a bit longer than it should do. We have been at the post office now so that um, has taken a bit of time and also I washed my hair in the middle of the day which is something I don't normally do. Uh, my ex-husband phoned me about my daughter who's being a pain. Um, so there's been lots of little things that have uh, just taken up extra time. Um, yeah, 10 past four now. Now I am going to upload tomorrow's YouTube video because I haven't done that yet. Um, so I need to get the video uploaded. Wayne is washing everything up in the background, which you may be able to hear, um, so that we can start on the next two loaves of special edition soap. After that, we were planning on doing uh, some of our regular soaps, but we might not do that. I might do bath bombs instead because we've actually had a wholesale order come in about an hour and a half ago and she has ordered some bath bombs. So we don't have them made up. So I might actually switch it and make the bath bombs for her instead. We'll see. But for now, I'm just going to go match my videos, get tomorrow's one up so that it's all done and dusted. So in terms of actual time frame, at this point we have been going for about, I believe, five, six hours. Um, so although it's passing very quickly on the camera, um, to give you an idea of the actual time, it has been about five or six hours. Obviously we haven't been making soap that entire time. As I said, we did go to the post office, I did speak to my ex-husband and I did wash my hair. Um, but just making the loaves, because these ones are more intricate, they do take longer. They're a lot of fun to do, but they can also be incredibly stressful. So I've got to say at this point, I'm very pleased that I'm nearing the end because I can tell you I was so ready to just sit down and chill. Um, on a side note, I absolutely love this little purple colour in this soap here and I'm going to top it in a minute with some little flowers, chrysanthemum flowers that we made as well. Um, this is one of the harder soaps to create in terms of actually making those chrysanthemum flowers, but once the flowers are made, uh, which I did by piping, then the actual soap itself isn't too difficult. It's a simple swirl with two colours and then the embeds placed on top, and I think it looks really, really pretty. Hopefully it's gonna sell well. So it's now about half past five. We have finished all the loaves of soap. We've got five of our special edition uh, soaps made. We were gonna do a batch of sea salt and mint, but I think we're gonna do some bath bombs instead, as I said earlier, because of the wholesale order that came in. And to be honest, it's coming up for six o'clock. We've been making soap all day. It'd be nice to do something a little bit different. So on to some bath bombs. 
Now some of you will remember from a few minutes ago, earlier on, I said we tend to make things in batches on certain days, so soaps one day, bath bombs another, scrubs another. Um, as you can see, I'm not even following my own advice here. The only reason being is that while we were in the middle of making those soaps, we did, as I said, have a large wholesale order come in and it had bath bombs on it and I just wanted to get them done as quickly as I could because they take a good couple of days after we've made them to dry and be ready for sending out. So I didn't want to hold up our wholesale customer and keep her waiting. So we switched from making soaps to actually making the bath bombs, but that is kind of a, um, unusual occurrence and it is purely because we needed those bath bombs and we needed them you know as quickly as possible otherwise we'd just be making some more soap right now but it's quite nice i think because we don't show you guys a lot of us making bath bombs i do need to do some more bath bomb videos but i haven't done one for a while uh, since we moved house we've had a very happy occurrence which is actually we don't seem to need our dehumidifier running while we're making bath bombs anymore. Uh, I don't know why that is. When we used to live in Hastings, we were very low down, we were very close to sea level, and we were much more coastal. Now we're more inland, inland and we're higher up as well. So I don't know if there's some slight humidity changes or what it is, but actually, our bath bombs, touch wood at the moment, seem to be working without having that dehumidifier running, which they never did where we used to live. Didn't matter what the weather was doing, if it was sunny, warm, rainy, snowy, in our old place we always needed that dehumidifier. Now we don't, and so hopefully that will mean that we can actually show you some more bath bomb videos over the next few weeks and months because it's a lot easier to be able to make them downstairs in the same room where we make everything else as opposed to our little tiny room, which has no space for filming, um, but was the only room small enough for our dehumidifier to fully, you know, work properly in our last place. So yeah, hopefully there will be some bath bomb making videos coming up shortly. Um, I love our bath bombs. They can be a pain and they can take a while to make. Um, but I do find it incredibly satisfying when you turn them out and you get that lovely finish and they dry nicely and then you have a bath with them and they fizz and they're lovely. So they are not the easiest thing to make for certain, but when you get them right, they are very satisfying. And we do use this KitchenAid stand mixer for ours. We find it just the kind of best way of mixing them. KitchenAids are expensive and I wouldn't have been able to afford to buy one. This was actually a gift to me 10 years ago from my parents for my 30th birthday. Um, I wouldn't have one in my house if it wasn't for them kindly gifting it to me because I can't afford things like KitchenAid myself out of my own pocket but it used to be used for food and now obviously it is not because it is now a bath bomb and body butter mixer only. <laughs> I'm just going to finish up with the last few bath bombs here so I'll let you watch us making them in peace without my voice overdubbing everything. Okay, that's far too much silence for my liking, so I'm going to talk again. Um, we've had a good day today. It has been disjointed, but I have pretty much got done what I wanted to. We have got bath bombs made, we have got soaps made, the video's all set to go. So I would class it as a successful day, and it's a day where I can now sit down, relax, have a bit of a chill, and not feel guilty for not getting enough done, because we have definitely got enough done today and I'm happy with how we've done. So here we have just a small number of bath bombs completed. Um, they're looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out. There is a couple of the first ones there that are looking slightly wonky, like they have got some flat bottoms going on, but that doesn't really matter. And as we all know, flat bottom bombs, they make the rocking world go round. <laughs> God, I amuse myself greatly. Ah, right, that is the bombs. I can just feel the face Wayne's making at me behind my back. Um, so, making day, we've done the bombs. And we have done five loaves of 
are limited edition or special edition soaps. And I think that's going to be enough for today now. So back over here in some rather terrible lighting, looking a little bit dishevelled. Um, it's been quite a day today. Aside from the making, it's just been a bit of a, it's been a funny day. We started with sun, then we got snow, then we got wind, then we got, <laughs> we got wind. <laughs> you can tell I'm tired. I'm making bad jokes. Um, yeah, and just stuff that's kind of interrupted the day a little bit. Um, but we've got most of what we wanted to get done done. And it's just after seven o'clock now. And I know it's just after seven o'clock because I've just managed to buy some citric acid from the soapery. They put that back in stock at 7 o'clock tonight, so I've got myself 25 kilos of citric acid so I can make some more bath bombs. But that is what we do in a making day. It's fairly hectic. I got up um, about half seven, started working just after eight, and it's now just after seven. And um, yeah, there we are. Stuff's been made and uh, it's all good. We'll probably wake up and do something similar tomorrow. So... That is a Sussex Handmade Soap Company making day. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to give us a like and a subscribe and a comment or whatever. And we shall see you next time. Bye.